Well, we got some huge news yesterday from Dominion Resources, one of the nation's largest gas and electric utilities, which also happens to be one of my favorite utility stocks with a bountiful 3.6% yield and one of the most shareholder-friendly companies in the book. Dominion announced a gigantic joint venture. They're going to own 45% of a pipeline. It's going to be a $4.5 to $5 billion natural gas pipe that can transport gas from the Marcellus and Utica shales to markets in Virginia and North Carolina. Now, Dominion already had a growing natural gas, gas transmission, distribution, and storage business in these regions, and they've been building a liquefied natural gas export terminal in Virginia. But this represents a major embrace of a pipeline concept, which I think is a brilliant move considering the domestic energy revolution. So let's take a closer look with Tom Farrell, the chairman and CEO of Dominion Resources, find out more about this project and his company's future. Mr. Crown, welcome back to Mad Money. Evening, Jim. Great to be with you. Okay, Tom, I got to tell you, this is such a huge project, and I'm going to ask three, whether three inputs determined it. One, is it because there's so much natural gas in Marcellus, far more than we thought? Two, is it because the economy is growing faster than we think? And three, is it because coal is going to come offline and people are going to need more natural gas? I think it's definitely one in three and uh, a little bit of two. There is a Vast amount of gas in the Marcellus and Utica region. Uh, just last year, they expected to have 20 billion cubic feet a day by 2025. Uh, in or Earlier this summer, they came out with an estimate, Wood McKenzie did, that said they'll have 30 billion cubic feet by 2025 every day out of the Marcellus region. <clears throat> there is going to be more coal coming off, most likely, as a result of the uh, impending carbon rules and from older rules that were passed a couple of years ago by the EPA. So there's a tremendous need for gas infrastructure, particularly in the southeast, which will provide great economic uh, development opportunities for Virginia, West Virginia, and North Carolina, which will help the economy grow. Now, one of the things that I thought was important to point out is uh, this is the kind of project that is probably going to put more people to work than anything that happens during the years that you build it. Could it be the largest construction project, in the, at least in the, in the east? I would think it certainly is. Uh, it's certainly the largest uh, infrastructure project uh, in, in the Mid-Atlantic in many, many decades. So does that mean also that it's, uh, when I looked at the path in the map, I I've been reading about how some people are now fighting the way pipelines are going to be built, but this one seemed like that you're going to have a lot of right-of-way, there will not be a lot of right-of-way issues or a lot of approvals that will be needed, and it will get done. It, we need, we'll need for, uh, approval from FERC. Uh, as, as with any interstate pipeline, that's the primary, that's the lead regulator uh, under the federal rules. Uh, and there'll be a few other permits here and there, but it should, we, we're very confident that this pipeline will get built. Okay, let's go to Coe Point, Maryland. Uh, I know you're waiting. You've got a, a firm by Maryland Court of Special Appeals. You got a, a judgment with Sierra Club, which is what I was most concerned about. But that was because you work hand in hand with Sierra Club. I tell people that's what you ought to do. But it also says that FERC is another situation where you're waiting approval. Is that going to be a problem? No, uh, it's just really a matter of time. FERC is, a, they work very hard at FERC. They have a lot going on with gas infrastructure. Uh, we think we're hoping to have uh, their a final approval, like literally any time. All right. Now, one of the things I think people don't understand in our country is, is that you are considered to be the cheapest producer of power, which is why a lot of the big data centers are choosing your area. Is that still happening? Are data centers still in growth mode? Yes, they are. They're still moving in, uh, particularly into the Northern Virginia area of our service territory. Wait, when a Google, whatever, when a co do they come in and try to negotiate individual contracts with you, or do they just take the power as it is? They take our regulated our tariffs under our regulation. Wow, pretty good. Now, um, I wanted to ask you about the state of where we are in terms of natural gas and uh, condensate and export. Uh, versus oil and export. We've, we've been taking the Royal Dutch, BP. A lot of companies think that it's time to export oil, but I usually pulled up with the CEO of Dow Chemical. He's saying this is just, really, we got to hold off. We don't have enough in our country. What's right to export? What's not right? What's right about continental independence and what's not right? Well, the, uh, certainly there's <clears throat> more than enough gas uh, uh, to be able to export. Uh, on the condensates and the others, you know, Jim, I just I don't know as enough about that uh, as, some, as many others, but there's certainly an enormous amount of gas available. And that's the Department of Energy's job is to make sure that the right balance is kept there. And, and they've been working very hard on that. Well, I, look, you've done so much for shareholders. You've been a great performer. I know you've got maybe an MLP coming to doing so much right stuff. Tom Farrell, Chairman CEO of Dominion Resources. Thank you so much for coming on the show, sir. Thank you, Jim. This is just another reason to own one of my absolute favorite dividend-paying stocks, Dominion, since we started the show. Big thinker and returns the money to shareholders. Stay with Kramer.